انتو بسمعونا على اس تي ار ذا ساندي تايمز راديو ثقافة ميوزك واكثر ويلكم تو واتش ذا ايكون ذا بودكاست وير وي تشارت ذا رايز اوف ريست واتشز ذات ديدنت جاست تيل ذا تايم ذي تول ذا فيوتشر I'm Sophia Brontwein, publisher of the Sandy Times, and in this third episode of our 10 past series, we are aiming for the stars. This is a story of rocket launches, Cold War rivalries, and the chronograph that made it through NASA's gauntlet of hellish tests to become the first, and still the only, watch born on the moon. Today we are talking about the Amiga Speedmaster, the Moonwatch. But before we suit up, let's rewind the tape. It's the mid-1950s. America's post-war optimism is surging. Drive-ins, diners and Detroit's V8 engines define the cultural soundtrack. Mechanical watches are booming. Swiss manufacturers are engaged in a quiet arms race of precision and prestige. And here comes Amiga. The Amiga story begins in 1848, in the small Swiss village of La Chaux de Fonds. A 23-year-old watchmaker named Louis Braun opened a modest workshop under the name Louis Braun and Phil. From the beginning, the goal was ambitious, to create accurate, reliable watches that could be sold across Europe. His sons, Louis Paul and César Brandt, took the company global. In 1894, they developed a revolutionary movement, highly accurate, entirely industrialized and easy to service thanks to its modular construction. They named it Amiga, the last letter of the Greek alphabet, symbolizing perfection and achievement. The movement was such a success, the entire company rebranded as Amiga Watch Co. That name would soon be etched into Olympic stopwatches, battle-tested military timepieces, and eventually into moon dust. By the early 20th century, Amiga had established itself as a benchmark of precision. It was chosen as the official timekeeper of the Olympic Games in 1932, a role it still holds today. During World War II, Amiga supplied over 110,000 watches to the British RAF and Allied forces, prized for their legibility and robustness. This duality, tool and jewel, machine and myth, is what defines Amiga's legacy and no single watch expresses that better than the Speedmaster. In 1957, Amiga took a radical leap, launching a trio of professional tool watches. The Seamaster 300, the Railmaster and the Speedmaster. The Speedmaster was designed for motorsports, hence the tachymeter scale on its bezel, allowing drivers to calculate speed. But fate had bigger plans. From racetrack to launch pad, this is the journey of the most tested, most trusted, and most storied chronograph in human history. Let's start with the basics. The first Speedmaster, reference CK2915, debuted in 1957. It featured the now iconic three compacts layout, three subdials at 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. Inside was the Amiga Caliber 321. A hand-wound, column-wheel chronograph movement, revered for its precision and robustness. A stainless steel case with broad arrow hands, a domed hazelnut crystal and that tachymeter bezel, the first time it had ever been placed on the outer edge of a watch. It was bold, purpose-built and different. But the Speedmaster's destiny would shift in 1962 thanks to a quiet man with enormous ambition, astronaut Wally Shearer. Shearer, one of NASA's original Mercury 7 astronauts, privately purchased an Amiga Speedmaster, reference CK2998, and wore it aboard the Mercury Atlas 8 mission. That flight made the Speedmaster the first Amiga in space. NASA took notice. As America geared up for the Apollo program, NASA engineers realized they needed a wristwatch that could handle the extreme conditions of space. Not just temperature swings and vibrations, but the absolute absence of atmosphere. A watch that wouldn't fog up, fail or flinch when lives were on the line. In 1964, 
NASA anonymously purchased a batch of chronographs from top Swiss brands – Rolex, Longan, Hamilton and Amiga among them. They were subjected to 11 brutal tests, simulating the harshest realities of space travel. Extreme temperatures, high G-forces, vacuum, humidity, shocks, acceleration and more. Only one watch survived all the tests. Well, you guessed it – the Amiga Speedmaster. In March 1965, NASA officially qualified the Speedmaster for all manned space missions. And that's when the legend took off. On June 3, 1965, astronaut Ed White wore his Speedmaster as he became the first American to walk in space during the Gemini 4 mission. The watch was tethered to his wrist with a long Velcro strap worn on the outside of his bulky EVA suit. But it was July 20, 1969, that sealed the deal. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon. Armstrong, as mission commander, left his Speedmaster inside the lunar model when the onboard electronic timer failed, using it as a backup. But Aldrin, he wore his reference ST105.012 Speedmaster when he stepped out onto the lunar surface. That moment, humanity's first footprint on another world, was measured in Amiga seconds. Since that day, the Speedmaster has been nicknamed the Moonwatch, and Amiga has leaned into it with favor, proudly engraving the case bags with flight qualified by NASA for all manned space missions and the first watch worn on the Moon. Let's zoom in on what made the Moonwatch a technological marvel. The original Speedmaster Professional was a manual wind chronograph, an intentional choice. In zero gravity, Automatic rotors don't function reliably. The movement, Amiga's Caliber 3 to 1, was renowned for its smooth chronograph engagement and column wheel architecture, a feature favored by purists. The case was 42 mm, with asymmetrical crown guards introduced in later references for added protection. The Hasselit crystal, a type of acrylic, was chosen over sapphire because it wouldn't shatter in a vacuum. It had a black dial with white batten hands and luminous indices, ultra legible even in low light. The bezel, with its tachymeter scale, was fixed, designed for calculating speed, but ironically not needed in space. Still, it remained a design signature. But the Speedmaster's significance wasn't just technical, it became emotional, symbolic. When the Apollo 13 mission suffered a catastrophic oxygen tank explosion in 1970, the Speedmaster became mission critical again. With their onboard computers shut down to conserve power, the astronauts had to execute a precise 14 second engine burn to correct their re entry trajectory. Astronaut Jack Swigert timed that maneuver using his Speedmaster. That moment helped Amiga to earn NASA's Silver Snoopy Award, an honor rarely given to external partners. Amiga has since released several Snoopy tribute editions, now among the most coveted collector pieces in the brand's catalog. Let's talk about references. CK2915, the first Speedmaster 1957, broad arrow hands, steel bezel, caliber 3 to 1. Reference 2998, the first Amiga in space, worn by Shira, alpha hands, black aluminium bezel insert. Reference 105003, worn by Ed White during the first US spacewalk. No crown guards, straight locks. Reference 105012 and 145012, the moon landing models. Asymmetrical cases, twisted lugs, this became the blueprint for the Speedy Pro. And the last reference I want to talk about 145022 introduced in 1968 with the caliber 861, a more robust chem-actuated chronograph movement that would power the Speedy for decades. In 2020, Amiga brought back the legendary caliber 3 to 1, painstakingly reverse-engineered from original specs. Today, modern Speedmasters housing the 3 to 1 are crafted in precious metals and produced in small quantities. A nod to the connoisseurs. 
but the backbone of the line remains the Moonwatch Professional. Today's version, updated in 2021, stays remarkably faithful to the Apollo era design. It has a step dial, a dot over 90 bezel, a sapphire or hasselet option, and a brand new movement, caliber 3861. This new engine brings master chronometer certification, anti-magnetic performance, and coaxial escapement, all while retaining the hand-wound feel. The Speedmaster isn't just about history, it's still going places. From the wrists of astronauts aboard the ISS to modern artists, actors and athletes, the Moonwatch has endured as a symbol of excellence and ambition. Buzz Aldrin wore one. So did Tom Hanks in Apollo 13. George Clooney has been a lifelong Speedy fan. Frida Kahlo's portrait once appeared next to a gold case variant in Amiga's boutique displays. And Daniel Craig? He is often spotted with a vintage Ed White on a NATO strap. Proof that Bond and the Moon aren't mutually exclusive. Collectors speak of Speedy Tuesdays, a grassroots movement that became a global phenomenon. Amiga embraced it, releasing special editions through the website, selling out in minutes. And the auction scene, well, it's hot. A reference to 9151 Speedmaster sold at Philips Geneva in 2021 for over 3.4 millions of dollars, a world record for an Amiga. That's right, from $150 retail price in the 60s to multi-million dollar hammer prices today. Not bad for a watch, built for fuel stained gloves. So what does Amiga Speedmaster mean today? It's proof that form can follow function and still be beautiful. It's a reminder that innovation isn't loud. Sometimes it's sticking quietly under the sleeve of an astronaut. It's the idea that precision matters, especially when your life depends on it. And it's one of the rare mechanical watches that didn't just witness history, it made it happen. Amiga's USP has always been this trinity, precision, innovation and performance under pressure. From coaxial escapements to master chronometer certifications, from deep sea dives to lunar walks, Amiga doesn't just make luxury watches, it makes instrument-grade timekeepers that thrive in extreme environments, and yet they remain elegant enough to wear to the opera. That's it for episode 3 of Watch the Icon. The Amiga Speedmaster didn't just orbit the Earth, it landed on the Moon, timed the impossible and earned its place in horological mythology. Next time we'll switch gears with the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, a luxury sports watch that flipped the industry on its head with steel, screws and swagger. From Gerald Genta's sketchpad to boardroom power moves, we'll explore how the Royal Oak became the holy grail for a new kind of collector. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate and share Watch the Icon with your fellow time nerds. Got a speedy story? Tag us online. Until next time, and remember, icons don't just keep time, they launch legacies.